All right, so today we're doing the orbital velocity lab. The orbital velocity lab. All right. All right, so let's say here's the sun. And here's the earth. Right. Now the sun's pretty big. The sun has lots of mass, so this, it has lots of gravity. So the gravity from the sun is pulling the earth towards it. Now the earth, although it's not nearly as massive as the sun is, still has a fair amount of mass and has a fair amount of gravity. So the earth is pulling the sun towards it. So if they're both pulling towards each other, you would think that they would crash into each other. Right? But they don't. Right? And the reason for that is because the Earth is moving in its orbit. Right? And objects that are in motion want to stay in motion. And they want to keep on going in the same direction that they're headed in. They have like momentum keeping it going in the same direction. So just like if I took a bowling ball and I went to a basketball court and I would to roll a bowling ball across a basketball court, it want to keep on going in a straight line unless the floor was crooked or somebody opened up a door and there's a big gust of wind or someone kicked it or something. If it, if it was just a ball rolling on the floor, it's going to keep on wanting to go in the same direction. All right. Well, kind of the same idea here. Uh, the Earth's moving in its orbit and the momentum wants to keep going in the same direction. So momentum wants to keep it going that way. Of course, the gravity from the sun is pulling it that way. So what you end up with, these two things going like that, what the Earth ends up doing is going in between there, like that, which becomes the orbit of the Earth. All right, so that's the path that way is, is like the vector of these two things like that. It's causing it to go around like that, all right? Now, um, for it to stay in orbit, things have to be nice and balanced, though, because if the Earth was traveling faster and this was more, then the combination of these two would lean more towards this way. And what you'd have happen it would spiral outwards. Right. Or or if the earth was slowing down, if the earth is traveling at a slower speed, then the combination of these two forces would make it go more towards that way, which would lead it to spiral into the sun and crash into the sun. Right, so how fast the planet's going is one thing. Right? Another thing that affects it is how big the sun is. So let's say our sun was a smaller star. Let's say it was a little dinky red dwarf star. Right? Then its force of gravity would not be as much. So if the Earth was moving at its current speed, there's not as much gravity pulling in that way, so the Earth would spiral outwards. Or if our sun was a bigger star with more mass and more gravity, then this force of gravity would be a lot more. And then if the Earth was still going the same speed, that wouldn't be enough force that way to keep it in orbit. So it ended up crashing in. So it's, it's a delicate balance between the force of gravity and how fast it's going in this orbit that keeps it in orbit. Right. So what we're going to do today is simulate that. So I have a little setup which involves a plastic tube, a styrofoam ball, with some fishing line wrapped around it. The fishing line is going to go through the tube connected to a hook that's connected to sinkers. Right. Now, um, so that is 
this setup right here. That is the setup right here. Now, just like I said a little while ago, if the earth was not moving, if the earth was not moving around the sun, because so like the ball's the earth, the pen represents the sun, the sinkers would represent the force of gravity. Um, if the earth was not moving in this orbit, it was just like sitting out there in space, then what would happen is the gravity from the sun would make it crash in like that. However, our planet, the Earth, is traveling at just the right speed to keep it from crashing in or going off in outer space. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how the force of gravity affects how fast it has to go to stay in this orbit. So we're going to start off, I'm going to start off with two weights at the bottom of that, and I'm going to get the thing twirling, and then I'm going to count off uh, 10 seconds. I have a timer up here. And I'm going to measure off 10 seconds. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to um, count how many times it goes around in uh, 10 seconds. So I'm going to start off with just, again, just two sinkers on the bottom of this. I'm going to start off with two, sink, two sinkers on the bottom of this. And I'm going to say start. When I say start, you're going to have to start counting how many times the ball goes around. And then I'm going to say stop, and then you stop counting. All right, so start. Stop. All right, so however many times that went around, you're gonna write that number right there for the number of revolutions. And then for this column, it says orbital velocity, that's the speed at which it's traveling. Well, we're doing this for 10 seconds, so this should be easy. You just take this number, divide it by 10, that would give you that number right there. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put three sinkers on the bottom of this. Start. Stop. All right, so however, however many times you counted then, that's going to be your answer for right there. And then you take that number, divide it by 10. That's your answer for right there. All right. So now I'm going to do the same thing with four sinkers. Start. Stop. All right, so however many times you had you count there, how many times around, and then uh, that number divided by 10 gives you that one. All right, so now I'm gonna do it with five sinkers.
start. Stop. So however many you counted, put right there. And then that number divided by 10 is what I put right there. And now for the last one, uh, putting six sinkers on the bottom. Start. Stop. All right, so however many you got, how many revolutions put right there, and then divide it by 10 gives my answer right there. So what you should notice is that the more sinkers I put on, the more weights I put on, that for that to stay in orbit, uh, the velocity had to increase. So to keep it in the same orbit, I had to keep increasing the velocity or the speed. Um, because if I, again, remember, if I get just the right speed, it stays in orbit. If I start not spinning it fast enough, it crashes in. Or if I start spinning it too fast, then it starts going out. All right, so it has to be just the right speed to stay in orbit. Uh, another thing to point out is that if you, hopefully you notice it or not, uh, for all my times I did this, I kept the ball about a foot away. So that's a constant you have to keep when you're doing this lab because if like on my first trial, I had the ball like really close to the, the tube like right here or then in the next trial I had the ball farther out like that that's going to change my results what you should notice is that the closer it is to the tube the faster it goes when it's farther away from the tube it goes slower so the farther the body is out the slower it has to go in orbit to stay in orbit all right now what you're going to do with your data is you're going to graph your data next and what you're going to be graphing is on the bottom of the graph is the number of nuts or sinkers on the side of the graph is the number of revolutions so the number of weights and the number of revolutions now the graph you're going to make for this is not a normal line graph uh, and the reason being is usually when students do this they have a hard time keeping the the ball the same distance away from the tube so their numbers are kind of a little all over the place so just doing a line graph it usually isn't a very good thing to do now our numbers are gonna be a little bit better because i'm excellent twirler um, but anyways so you're gonna be graphing these two sets of numbers right there um, so let's say for example that you, you plot your numbers and you got your data points look something like that all right now, if I did, just looking at that graph, I could tell that, you know, overall it's going up. But if I did like a, a dot to dot graph, it looked kind of weird like that. So to better show the relationship, what I do is I'm going to draw a best fit line for my data. So what that means is I plot my data points like that, and then... I'm gonna take a straight edge, I'm gonna put a straight edge down the middle of my data to kind of show what the overall trend is. So if those are my data points, I can take a straight edge like this and kind of have it go down the middle of the data. Kind of like that. So what I can see with my best fit line is that as the number of sinkers increased, which is the force of gravity, uh, the number of revolutions also increased. All right, so it's a, you look at my graph there, you can see it's a direct relationship. 
All right, so once you got your graph done, then there's just a, a few questions to go with it. Um, so you answer your questions, and then uh, you're going to want to take pictures of the front page, the questions, and your graph, and you want to submit all those to the school. And that is that. That is the Orbital Velocity Lab.